I have a confession to make. I've committed the worst, the lowest, the most heinous, the deadliest of sins in the organic gardening community. I have used pesticides. Does that mean I should be shunned and excommunicated from this idyllic community? Should I be tarred and feathered, dragged down the street, tied to a stake, whipped with a cat of nine tails and set ablaze because of my transgression? Or shall I forever be judged like a vegan walking past a barbecue and getting a whiff of those burger patties and bacon frying on the grill and thinking that smells so much better than a tofu and oatmeal sandwich. Let's get the full story. Good morning and welcome back to One Step at a Time Farmstead. I'm Lucas and I'm so happy to share our journey with you. I believe I found the culprits destroying my lettuces and onions. Yeah, so basically the first thing that we noticed was that our lettuce was dying off. And like in the previous video, I thought that our municipal water might have been a contributing factor to that loss. But then I started noticing that the onions were being cut down as well. And I suspected some cutworms uh, because I showed you with the beans. Yeah, let me just quickly show you this. That second bean as well, well there's probably more now, but this one was also chomped off at the top and I spoke about that and the other one that found a way to grow and I can see the second one adopted the first one's attitude and decided to find a way to grow as well. With the tops of the beans that were being cut, I suspected that we might have had some cutworms that chomped it down. Uh, then we noticed, you know, that all the onions were under attack now and took a closer look and I found all these uh, tiny little red ants in the garden, although I didn't see the ant nest or the mound the garden was completely infested with those little red ants. I was searching for a way to get rid of the ants. At this stage, I couldn't find any proper natural way to get rid of them. One being to pour boiling water into the nest, but I can't find the nest. And also, with my seedlings coming up here, dousing the whole garden bed in boiling water would destroy my garden. Also, sending my chickens into the garden wouldn't help, because they obviously would destroy the garden. The third option that I had was a mixture of borax and sugar and to make a bit of a sloppy paste with it and water and to put it in a jar punch some holes into the jar and you know put it in the garden as ant bait but that also wasn't very successful of course in the morning, more and more of the onions would be chopped down and lie in the garden. So as any responsible person would do, 
I try to turn to whom I see as my mentors for advice and looking at their videos, I saw that they were going or also in the past experienced some of some of the same frustration that I did. Looking at videos of uh, Jessica from Roots and Refuge, David the Good, and Gary Polochik, Polcharik, Polo, Gary Polcharik, Gary Polochik. Sorry, Gary Pilarchik. Pilarchik. However, you pronounce not the fish, the person, so it's not vultured. Gary Pilarchik. The rusted farmer or rusted gardener. The rusted gardener. Um, I looked at their videos um, to try and find some advice and it was in a weird kind of way soothing and reassuring to see that they went through similar challenges and frustrations to try and control ants in their gardens as well. So I looked to what their advice was, and some said the borax thing didn't work for them. Although, if you can find the nest, hot water, boiling water, down the nest helps a lot, but it's not an option for me here. Yeah. And a lot of them tried these home remedies or advice, and the majority of them seemed to be in ineffective. Jessica got these ant traps that's got a borax sugary mixture inside and that's awesome. You can put it somewhere in the corner of your garden. It will, you know, it's got the bait inside. It will attract the ants and they will carry that off into the nest and kill off the colony at the end of the day. Um, same as what this borax mixture is supposed to do. And that was effective for her. So putting a poison, contained poison and bait out in the garden was, you know, effective enough for her to get control of the ants in the garden. And Gary Belarchik the rusted farmer got an organic dust powder and it's beautiful to see that he was also so uncomfortable with it because it's toxic to all kinds of insects although it's organic it will kill off not only the ants you know or other parasites but it might be toxic with is toxic to beneficial insects as well, such as bees and ladybugs. And it's an indiscriminate killer. And something beautiful that he did, that I took to heart, is to early in the morning at seven o'clock, he would go out and dust his zucchini with the powder. No, no, sorry. Um, seven o'clock at night. Seven o'clock at night, he would go out and dust his zucchini with the powder when all the beneficial, when all the beneficial insects um, are inactive and not in the garden. And he would dust his plants down and then early seven o'clock the morning, uh, the next morning, he would take those and spray, spray the dust down.
um, so that none of the beneficial insects insects uh, would suffer from the toxin. The unforgivable sin that I committed was to take carbon dust because that is what I had on hand from three, four years ago to control uh, mite infestation on my chickens and that was still left over. So I came and dusted around the garden uh, on my lettuce and onions, also on the beans and squashes that I've got growing on that side. And the next morning I found all of these cutworm larva or caterpillars wiggling around in the garden and that's the first time I actually noticed the cutworms. Although I suspected there might be one or two, I never saw them and never knew that there was actually so many. And it was quite a bit that we go around here in the garden. I'm happy to say that it, that it seems that all the ants have either moved away I assume they moved away to greener pastures because uh, they don't like the powder. But you know, although there was so plenty of them in here, they seem to have gone. I don't know if the colony did die off. Maybe, if I'm lucky, but the chances that they just moved out of the area is probably bigger. But it seems yeah, that they are gone and that I've got hopefully the cutworms under control as well. Now the reason, and I never knew this, the reason why I didn't notice the cutworms is that they are nocturnal feeders. And I guess they hide under the mulch during the day and then crawl out at night and feast, you know, on the garden plants. So hopefully I've got them under control now as well. I used the carbon dust because I wasn't, or I'm not concerned about killing off beneficial insects at this stage, because at this stage, I don't have any beneficial insects in the garden. Um, there's nothing in flower. My seedlings are still small. Okay, some of the onions are finally getting a bit bigger and the beans are getting taller. But there's nothing in flower yet and I haven't seen a bee or a, a, a wasp or anything of the kind as yet. So there's no pollinators at this stage and I haven't seen any predators, uh, predatory insects as well. Like I said, no wasps and um, there's no um, ladybugs or anything of the sort at this moment because there's no, no flowers, no uh, fruit. Um, and also, I don't have any um, aphids or anything in the garden as yet, so the predators won't be here because there's nothing to feed on, except maybe for those cutworms, but then again, wasps don't fly at night um, to feed on those cutworms, and that is why the cutworms thrive. So yeah, I'm not really concerned about killing or hurting any beneficial insects at this moment. The only ones that I do, that I am concerned about is the earthworms within this way. Carbidust can be hazardous to 
earthworms. But then again, I had to make a calculated risk and do what I had to do in order to ensure that I've got healthy plants to have a harvest at the end of the day to feed my family too. And although I try to go completely organic and herbicide and pesticide free within my garden, I have to con control and manage my garden in a way that it is successful. Hello Dante. So it's a calculated risk that I had to take. The carbon dust isn't as it is, you know, when we used wisely to humans or animals. And I took a page out of Gary's book to apply it. And I left it overnight. I actually left it two days. Then the rain came in anyway to wash, wash it off. Now there's still a little bit of residue over there that I'll just spray down. But I think the, the job is done. And it's still early. And if I can have everything under control quite early before our beneficial insects move in um, and before anything starts setting flower for the pollinators um, it's at least a step one step in the right direction um, am I completely comfortable with the carbon dust in the garden Mm, to be honest, no, I'm not. It's a compromise. It's not something I've never before used carbon dust in the garden. And it's not something I want to do. I want to be completely organic and completely herbicide and pesticide free. But I also had to act because, yeah, I have to sow seed now for the third time. Although there is luckily still some left, um, I have to get seed into the ground so that we can have a harvest. Um, not, I'm not too concerned with the lettuce. Because I've got lettuce that are busy sprouting um, at the little garden between the kitchen and the office. But I do need onions. Um, green onions and uh, the bigger bulb on onions. So yeah, it's a, it's a compromise that I had to make. But I had to use what is on hand as well. Here's a question. Am I a bad person? Am I a bad person for making that compromise? Does that make me a fraud or a hypocrite? I don't know yet. Giving my situation and not having the resources to organic pesticides at the moment and knowing that the organic pesticide would act in an identical fashion and have a similar impact on my garden being an indiscriminate uh, pesticide killing both beneficial and hazardous insects it would have exactly the same effect so would the compromise be any different if I did go with the organic version instead of the chemical version of the same pesticide? I don't know. It would have the same effect either way. I just want to make it clear. I'm not saying that 
Jessica or David or Gary influenced me in any way to use a chemical pesticide. It's just that I see them as mentors in gardening and we've got so much to learn from them. And I was just relieved to see that sometimes they struggle with the same challenges that I face, that we face, and how they try and find solutions for their style of gardening as well. And what they did, although the decision to use carbon dust is completely on myself, um, it's a decision I made, a calculated decision that I took to control pests in my garden. But I thank Jessica and David and Gary for their contribution and sharing their gardening experiences with us so that we can learn from them as well. Um, I don't think you guys will ever understand the impact that you have on us with the knowledge and experience that you share so freely with us. Thank you. Uh, we really, really, I really, really appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you.